ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the channel today is an off day for me i'm off of work but if you're like me you can't really sit around the house so i am going to clean some water troughs and while i do that i figured i'd answer some of your questions on my instagram i posted a question sticker and we had a lot of entries so i'm gonna get to a few of these questions and while i do that we're gonna clean some water troughs since it's kind of a crummy day and there's not a whole lot else to do the very first question is any advice for beginning ropers and there is a ton of advice that I could give to a beginning roper. First I would say start on the ground, start on the dummy on the ground and uh, really build your confidence on there. Learning how to rope that dummy really really well and consistently then move up to a sled and then move up to live steers. I think sometimes you can want to jump too quickly and progress too quickly when in reality you need to kind of go slow and methodical. That way when you get all the way up to live steers, you feel very comfortable and confident and your riding is good. The other thing that I would say is make sure that your riding and your horsemanship is also progressing so that by the time you get to live steers, you're ready to go in all aspects of roping. Another tip that I would give for beginners is go to a clinic or two. Get with a professional or somebody that teaches roping and really learn from them and get some guidance from them as well. Most of them have many years of experience and have been doing this a long time and have done it professionally, they're gonna be the ones that you really want to go to and, uh, and you really wanna lean on for some advice. Okay. Trough number one is done. Nice and clean for these horses. The next question is if I could buy another roping dummy, which one would I buy? That one's pretty easy for me, whether it was a on the ground dummy or a sled, I would buy the Smarty. I've used a lot of the competitors products and they're okay, but for me, I like the Smarty way better. They've got a great team over there. Al Bach is obviously a legend and uh, I just think those products are superior to everybody else's. Mr. Ryder, what are you doing, buddy? He's enjoying having this middle paddock to himself. We tried to put him in both end paddocks and he really didn't like that. So we put him in this one and he's loving it. The next question is, what is my favorite feeling about team roping or on team roping? My favorite feeling on team roping is going all out on your horse, starting from the box where you're standing still to going as fast as they can possibly go, that is a pretty cool feeling. To feel the power that these horses have when they really get up and start going is, uh, is a feeling that you really can't replicate. So that is definitely my favorite feeling. Last but certainly not least, Miss Leah's. And for those of you that are wondering, yes, we moved all the horses around. Leah was in the middle one. We moved her to this end. The boys were in this one and we moved them in there. and. So far, fingers crossed, everything is working out just fine. Everybody's happy, everybody's loving their turnout, and, uh, and everybody is loving this overcast and cloudy day. The next question is, what are my thoughts on alfalfa and making horses hot, and then what about feeding grain? So, to me, alfalfa will make your horse hot if you are not exercising and getting all that excess energy out of your horse. If you just feed your horses and you don't ever exercise them and you don't burn off that energy, they're gonna be hot. But to me, I like alfalfa, I like coastal. I think each of them have different nutrients in them, uh, different protein, different fibers, that sort of stuff, as far as I can tell. And so we feed a little bit of both. I love having horses on alfalfa. I think they get real big and strong, but you definitely have to exercise all that out of them. As far as grain, it's the very same. Uh, we feed grain as well, so all of these horses get grain, alfalfa, and coastal hay.
Okay, let me answer this one while this trough is getting refilled. How many ropes do you go through in a practice? I usually go through two. So I try to stagger my ropes. So when I get a new rope, I will rope with it in practice, put four or five, maybe six runs on it, put it away in my bag, I'll grab another one. And so that way, when we get to the big ropings, I have a rope that's already broken in, but it's not brand new. So I try to go through two or three ropes at a time in a practice. Especially if I have a new rope, I wanna get through a couple runs with it before I stick it in my bag. Now, I have probably 10 ropes in my bag most of the time, and uh, hope that answers your question. Those troughs are all clean for these horses and I feel much better. It is instant gratification when you clean water troughs. Let me answer this question. I get this one all the time. What number roper am I? I am a three on the head side and then I don't heal, so I don't have a healing number. The final question comes from Will and Will has been roping for 10 months and he says, I started roping 10 months ago and at times I feel like I'm not getting any better and tend to get frustrated with myself. How do you cope with that? Do you feel like that at times and what's your advice? As a beginner roper, I always feel like you tend to get better and then you plateau and then you tend to get better and you tend to plateau. For me, shortening those plateaus is the best option. I feel like when I am shortening those plateaus is when I'm reaching out to people that are much better than I am. Reaching out to ropers that have been roping a long time, that are higher number ropers, asking them lots of questions, getting their advice on my runs or sending them runs, something like that, going out and working with them, going to clinics, that sort of thing. So my advice would be reach out to other ropers that are substantially better than yourself and ask for their guidance. Ask for them to watch some of your runs or send them some runs or go to some of their clinics. And a lot of times they will see things that are little changes that can help you out. So everybody goes through it, but my advice would be to reach out to some better ropers and ask for their opinions. If you guys like this video and you like me answering some of your horse questions, let me know in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up, make sure that you're subscribed and uh, go check out our amazing sponsor, Ozona Organics. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time. Bye.